Oh yeah? When using this copper brake line, the uh, flaring tool you need is a double flaring tool. So basically you've got one of these, it's this vise here, and you want the copper to protrude the distance of whatever size you're using down to the first step. So basically you line that up, make sure you got that, make sure that this is cut off straight and chamfered on the inside so you don't have any burrs. Then what you do is you put this you put this little adapter for the double flare over the top of it and then you grab the rest of the tool. You take this, you slide it up over here and get it into that, that hole there. Tighten this down. Now you got it all lined up. You turn this to flare that down. Once you got it totally in there and flat, you take it off. Remove the fitting and you're left. Currently, this is how it looks. So then to get that double flare, you take this tool alone 
and insert it into the hole. this down it'll give you that double or the uh, called a double flare double flare there or the uh, inside and outside flare so as you can see got the outside and the inside and if you look at this, this is a piece of the previous, the steel brake line that was originally there. It looks almost identical. This copper brake line is so easy to use. So a big thing not to forget when doing brake lines is don't forget to put the fittings onto the line before you flare both ends. Ask me how I know.
So I'm filling it way over what it should be because I'm about to bleed the brake lines. Which means that it's going to pull brake fluid through and the last thing in the world you want to happen is for air to start sucking through this, contaminating all the bled brake lines as you're working on them. So that's why it's overflow. I'm going to be using this tool here to basically bleed the brake lines. You, it, it creates a vacuum and you put this over the bleed valve here and you pump this and it sucks pressure through the tube pulling air bubbles out of the system. And it's very important so we will start by putting brake fluid in here just to keep air from uh, getting back into line, it's got a little hose here, so it sucks from you know lower because you don't want to reintroduce new air. Um, and so, it's also very important to start with the furthest be, uh, tire away from the reservoir. So usually that is the passenger rear, um, and that's what we're going to start with here. So let's get after it. So it's not creating very good suction, so I am going to change a few things. And these old hoses get all hard and don't seal well anymore. This hose is a new hose. I just put it on. So I'm going to take a piece of it and replace that little piece. And then these zip ties actually have a metal tang in there. I feel when I want something to seal, I like to use these. And to truly get them tight, this is a zip tie tightener cutter. Get them way tighter than you can by hand. And you can adjust it. And it cuts it totally flush, doesn't leave anything hanging off to hurt you. Give this a try. It's quite a bit of air because obviously those two back lines were completely removed, and so all the all the brake fluid that would have been back there is missing, and so we're pulling it out of the reservoir that we filled up up front. So it's always good to go back and check and make sure you don't pull it out too quick because you don't want air coming from that uh, from the brake fluid reservoir back through the system. Sick of this being in here. Time to change it.
go. Now it's out of the bed. It's where it should be. Hi, buddy. All right. Back up. Good boy. Not completely gone, but definitely getting close. So many of you may be thinking that this truck is all rusty and junk and should just get rid of it. And you're right. But I own it outright. It works exactly how it should. It's not pretty. But I'll probably never get rid of this truck. Even once I get... I have better trucks and nicer vehicles sometimes it's nice to have a piece of junk because you can take it places you don't care somebody dang dents your door you don't you're not freaking out at the end of the day i mean it's just a thing it's just a possession it doesn't mean anything so And this truck and I have been through a lot. I rolled this truck one time. I used to own a landscape design and construction business that I ran for about 10 years. Started it when I was 15. Ran it until I was about 25 and only got out of it because of the 0809 housing crisis in the United States here. And when people are not going to be able to pay their mortgage, they're sure as heck not buying a patio. So thankfully I had a bachelor's degree to fall back on, but I was doing work at a local fast food restaurant where we were removing a bunch of rock and so at that time I didn't have a dump truck but so I went and rented a, um, a dump trailer from a local uh, rental company and I was young I didn't know anything and it had surge brakes well all my other trailers had electric brakes and so I had a brake controller in all my trucks and basically makes it so that you know when you hook it up the electric brakes engage and whatever well surge brakes are where the tongue of the trailer has a hydraulic piston in it and that piston when you put pressure with the brakes on the vehicle the trailer pushes against the vehicle causing the trailer's piston in the in the tongue there to compress and then it has hydraulic lines that go back and break uh, the trailer axles. Well, come to find out after this whole incident, they were seized. And the trailer, every time, so I was hauling rock um, on the highway back to, I think at that time I was bringing it back to my house. And because they just wanted it gone at this, this uh, fast food facility did. And so... I was bringing it back here to dump it and on the highway the trailer would not drive uh, straight it wouldn't follow the truck straight so 
you know, I tried stopping, but every time I would slow down, the trailer would wag, and um, it was one of those, you know, hang on for dear life kind of things, and, and basically on the highway, on the way back, there's this downhill area that I had to do, and I was only going about 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour on the highway where, you know, it was a 70 mile an hour, uh, 70 mile an hour speed limit. And on the way down, the trailer jackknifes, flips over, and flips this truck onto its side. Luckily, all my employees were at the job site and they had other vehicles, and I was the only one in the vehicle. Well, it rolls, literally lands all across all four lanes, or, or basically uh, the two lanes of uh, the one direction. And, you know, I slid for 100 feet on the side of the truck. I, thankfully, and, you know, I feel truly blessed, I came out of it with nothing. I, not a sore muscle, nothing was hurt. I climbed up out of the truck, took my seatbelt off, climbed out of the truck, the truck was still running. I climbed back down into it to turn it off because I didn't want anything bad to happen. Uh, as far as like, you know, a fire or, you know, something like that. And so, um, you know, I, I got out. I mean, it took a while for the tow truck to get there. My employees came, picked me up and we, you know, waited. And when the tow truck guy came to get this vehicle or the truck off the side of the road, they had to cut the trailer off. And so after they got that off, uh, the fire department had to get out their jaws of life. They just wanted to play with their toy. It was You didn't need anything more than bolt cutters to get the dang thing because the, the tongue was ripped off. But they, they got it out, and I don't blame them. I would too. But um, when the tow truck driver hooked up the truck, to the winch, he pulled it back over because it was it was laying on its side. It was actually on on this side, and I'll show you. There's a scratches all along the the side. There's some dents in the bed. Still, I never fixed it. Um, and when the tow truck driver flipped the truck over, it, the truck went <laughs> and basically and just sat there and. Then one of the guys there goes, built like a rock. I mean, it was like the perfect Chevy, old school, you know, tank truck commercial. And they hauled it away on the flatbed, but literally, I mean, the truck has driven every day since. Um, and so whether or not this truck is all garbage and beat up, and it is, it's beat up, and but it runs well. You know, I maintain what needs to be maintained. You know, a lot of the aesthetic stuff, it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, I, I choose to put my money in other things than, you know, vehicles. Eventually, maybe if I have more money and more, um, more money than cents, I'll, I'll buy some nicer trucks. I, I used to have some really nice trucks. Um, I'm a big, big diesel fanatic. I love diesel trucks, but I decided when my wife and I were getting ready to get married, we uh, decided to go through the Dave Ramsey class and basically pay off as much debt as we could. And so I sold a ton of old, uh, my a lot of my equipment from my landscaping business, skid steers, trailers, you know, I, I still have quite a few of them, but uh, not, not equipment, but trailers. Um, sold off all my trucks, sold off my nicest vehicles, and I kept, I kept the crappiest one because I didn't care. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's it's just a truck. It's just got to work. And so, and that has made it so that I even have the possibility to take a chance with this YouTube channel because we don't have a lot of debt. Um, we pretty much have our mortgage and our, our, our basic utility bills. And, you know, that has allowed me the freedom to show you guys everything that I like doing. I mean, it's if you've seen the channel for long, you've seen 
a, an array of things, you know. I mean, I don't. My channel is not based around fixing vehicles, but I've been. I do it. I've been doing it for a long time, and so it's one of those deals where uh, I look at it like I prioritize the right things now, and then maybe eventually, when I have the more the you know I'm better financially situated, I can replace this truck. But, until that day, I will continue doing what you're seeing. I know you're not supposed to tap these, but... So until that day, I will continue doing the things you're seeing to this old rusted out piece of junk. And so I hope you enjoy channel i hope you've enjoyed my videos hope you've enjoyed a little bit more about me i don't like being in front of the camera i'm pretty private but i figured i'd give you a little more information another thing i think a lot of people are probably wondering or would like to know about me is how I know how to do so many different things. Where did I learn? Or who taught me? Or nobody taught me. And I don't know how to do everything. But if I can give you one piece of advice going forward in your life, no matter how old you are, I may be younger than you, and you're watching this. I may be significantly older than you. I may be the same age as you. It doesn't matter. You have to try. Just get out there and try. If it scares you, try it. If you're worried that you might do it wrong, do it wrong. Because you're going to learn more through your failures. You're going to learn more through those experiences where you can figure things out or maybe you don't figure it out and then you ask someone for help or you go find someone that knows more than you i have learned more from people helping me fix my problems or helping you know asking questions to you know older people who know what they're talking about than i have doing things right or having gotten things done right and so you know if you don't think you can do it then you can't but if you're concerned that you might not be able to, but you think you've got a chance, then you can do anything, absolutely anything. If you put your mind to it and you truly believe that you can do anything, then you literally can do anything. I, there is nothing I won't try. There is nothing I won't, I won't get out there and give it a shot. Now, am I an expert at everything? Absolutely not. Half of the stuff, even in some of the videos that you've seen me do, it's some of it's for the first time I've ever done it and it may come to us sh as a shock to you but um, that's just the God God's honest truth there is a lot that I know but the majority of what I know is through experiences that I've had or risks that I've taken when trying to figure something out that I, I've never done before. Another reason that I know how to do a lot of things is because I read a lot. I read a lot. I, I go onto forums on all kinds of different things, whatever whatever I'm into at that moment, whatever the flavor of the week, I'll join a forum on the web where guys like you, women like you, are significantly more of an expert in something than I am. Where you know way more than I do and I'll ask questions or I'll read other people's questions and I'll just literally soak that knowledge in and I'll do that for hours, sometimes days in preparation for a project or in preparation for a situation that I got to deal with. And then when it comes to it, actually doing it, I know more than I did when I 
decided to do the project. And it looks like I've done it before. And even YouTube, YouTube has some amazing people making amazing videos. The content available today compared to when I started my lawn care business and, and turned it into a pretty big business at started at the age of 15 there wasn't the resources that there are today available to me back up back up buddy so get out there and use them read ask people and try that's what you got to do just try when spraying brake cleaner always make sure to check where that is pointing there was one time i picked up a can went to spray it sprayed myself right in the eyes oh my gosh it burns like crazy luckily in my enclosed trailer i had a uh, an eye wash kit and i doused it with eye wash and i was here at the house i went running into the house um and ripping my clothes off as fast as I could and went right into the shower and just doused my eyes for like, you know, 30 minutes. And it still burned after that, but um, I didn't lose my eyesight. But you could easily lose your eyesight from brick cleaner. Just be careful. Oh, yeah. Ah, the spoils of a beater that's rusted away. I bet your car doesn't give you these awesome gifts or maybe it does Take it for a test drive. So here's one of my other problems that I'm going to be addressing is the gauge cluster. Basically, if I push right here, right there, you see that? Now they'll work. So I'm going to be taking that apart and fixing it. Looks like the brakes are working. That's not good. So that whole squeak was this this guard back here touching the new rotor got bent last night. Looks like if I bend it back out, no more squeak. So the entire lens here is cracked. You can see right here. And what happened was, so it used to be that if I just kind of tapped on the on this, the gauges would start working again. 
but then it's got to the point where I had to hit it harder and harder and harder. And one time, I literally punched right through it, breaking the plexiglass. And now what I have to do is I have to push right below here where the odometer reads. From what I know, there's a pin connector right here that essentially, over time, can the solder on those pins basically gets heat and cooled, heat and cooled, and doesn't make contact as well. So I, we're gonna pull this out and see if I can't figure out a fix because it shouldn't be too bad, but. So here you've got your Prindle, which is basically your park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then your different gears. And then you've got your odometer, which is your, um, you know, miles or kilometers driven uh, as a whole on the vehicle. Usually what happens is right here, these pins sometimes don't quite make a good solder joint. But it's more often than not, it's the pins on this board. And so we're going to pull this whole board off and then look at the pins on the bottom and see if we can't fix the issue that way. What I'm doing here, this is a solder sucker. Basically, it has a ball here, and then it's got a soldering iron here, and you stick the pin You stick the pin that you want to pull the solder away from in that hole While you've depressed the ball, and then once it warms it up, you let go, and it sucks that wet solder back up into here And so we're going to do that with this row of pins right here Now this board, assuming I did my job right. Pop these clips down. This should come out. Sometimes you gotta work each one as you're as you're doing it. There we go. So now if I wiggle, wiggle, it's like the one more right there. It's got a little solder on it. Boom. There's a slight discoloration around these six pins. There's three here and three in there. And the solder doesn't look quite as bright as it maybe used to. And same goes, so those, those pins there are also, these are the main pins that go. So we're gonna pop this little plastic clip out here. Careful, this stuff is brittle because it's so old. Plastic. Okay, 
it's just a spacer holds this firmly um, on the on the board itself. Like you can see the discoloration around that, which I believe this is this these solder joints not being solid is why I could push on the screen and basically get it to cause uh, cause it to work. Looks like even let's see there's some. Uh, even like a little burn mark there and down in the corner and maybe even up along these pins too we'll hit some of these with some new solder and then uh, we'll see if we can fix it so those are the other pins right there just rubbing alcohol take some flux put it on each pin flux helps the solder flow into the joint better and basically make a good bond if you've ever done any soldering of copper pipes it is absolutely essential for that it gets it to flow in between the joints of the copper it's kind of fun to do you do it right and you watch that solder get sucked into that joint between the the copper pipe and the copper fitting There's all six of these pins resoldered. So basically, all these pins right there along the top are the ones I added solder to, basically I removed the solder put new solder in so that we can get a better bond and hopefully make a better connection now we'll take these pin or these uh, pins we'll put it back on the board and we'll resolder it on and give it a try Row pins right here. Boom. All the way. There. Pop it together and see if it works. While we're at it, I'm going to replace the, the lens here. I went to the junkyard and bought another cluster. And so I'm just going to take the lens off of it and put it on the, the old one.
All right, let's go give it a try. All right, drum roll. Looks like everything is working right. Temp is low. Pressure's good, bolts are good, I just filled up with fuel, tachometer works, we're going zero miles an hour, and we've got the beautiful decorative lights up there on top, and low washer fluid? So this grill guard's been on here for a long time, and it's starting to, while many years ago I repainted, primed it, and then repainted it black. And so that's what I'm going to do again. We're just going to kind of knock some of this basic rust off, hit it with some um, rust primer, and then hit it with a can of black. So I just undid the bolt so I could fold it forward enough to get the back side and get it all covered and coated. Now we're going to give this a coat of rusty metal primer and then a coat of black. Not looking for perfect here, just looking to make it look a little better. Ready? Come on, here. Ball. Good boy, Toby. Here. Good boy. Come on. Good boy, buddy. Here. Come on. Come on, buddy. Good dog. Here. Boat in. Ball. Here. Good boy, buddy. Good boy, buddy. Good dog. Yes. All right, here, here, release. Let's go, come on, go.
some point the hole for this bolt for this bracket broke off so I just put an oversized washer on there my plan eventually is to take this whole grill guard off and make it a make a new bracket or a system that hooks it to the frame so that it is literally a structural uh, grill guard not just a decorative thing so I just put an oversized washer like that and it just pinches it on there and it's been that way for years when I do good around to actually making a, this grill guard a brush guard or something that can be used off-road I'll probably fix this today that will work I like to write the mileage and the date on the filter so that I know when it was changed previously. Always take some oil, put it on this gasket. With gas trucks, I don't fill the oil filter full first. My diesels I used to. manual calls for six quarts of oil but I found that that tends to be too much I already added five quarts and there's our half quart when I was doing the brakes I noticed this And that's not good. So we're gonna do something about that. So this is the outer tie rod, and this is the inner tie rod. And so we're gonna replace both those. We're gonna replace the idler arm and the pitman arm. So I was going to do the ball joints. Here's the upper one. Here's the lower one. And I, they're still pretty tight. And so since they don't need to be done, I'm not going to mess with it right now. Once they go bad or if they start making noise, I'll, uh, I'll deal with them then. So we're going to focus on the, the tie rods, idler arm, pit, pitman arm. So we'll start by taking this side off. So in order to get this uh, so that the alignment is pretty dang close, we're going to measure from the thread, basically where this nut would tighten up onto the, um, the stabilizer bar to the grease zerk here on the outer tie rod. And as you can see, this is how it works. So I'm going to put this back in. I did not move this nut when I took this out. I left it where it is and I actually marked it with some uh, Teflon tape just in case it did move. Some people count threads and that works fine. 
you don't always have to do that. So if I measure, we're looking at about 15 and a quarter, or about 38 and a half millimeters. I'm sorry, centimeters. 38 and a half centimeters. So there we go. 15 and a quarter. So we'll keep that like that. We'll bring this nut tight. That one is ready to rock and roll. So this is the idler arm right here. This bracket here, I'm gonna reuse, put it back on the truck. It's it's fine, but it was just easier. Now that I got everything out, it was easier to just pull these two bolts off than try and get this one, because I couldn't get a, uh, an impact socket on that one. So now that we've got it here on the bench, I can do that. This nut right here has to come off.
perfect. Nice and tight. So I told you I'd show you the damage when I rolled this. And you can see it here. Don't mind the, the Midwestern salt all over the truck. Add some decoration to it, but you can see all the damage. This whole side's dented in. This pillar's dented in. This third door doesn't work. This one sounds like you're ripping the door off when you, uh, or this one sounds like the, you're ripping the door off when you open it. But it works well. Let's take it for a test drive. So as you can see, the, the dash looks fixed. Steering is working. Feels nice and smooth. So you have to tell me what you think of the grill guard. Turned out all right. She drives straight. She brakes. Steering's nice and tight. Hope you guys enjoyed.